Sorry about that, it kicked me off. Okay, so I'm drawing a picture for angle X terminating in quadrant three. Okay, remember tangent is the ratio y over x. In quadrant three, both x and y will be negative. So the point that the angle x passes through, sorry, the terminating side of the angle x passes through is going to be negative five comma negative 12. And we don't know r. But we need r because we need to find what cosine of x is equal to. So negative 5 squared plus negative 12 squared is equal to r squared. So I believe r is equal to 13. Double check. Yep, 13. So cosine of x is equal to negative 5 thirteenths. So to finish with the identity, we have one will be minus five thirteenths over two. Uh, we need a common denominator, so that'll be eight thirteenths divided by two, which is eight over 26, that's negative root 4 thirteenths. So negative 2 root 13 over 13 is what cosine of x over 2 is equal to. Okay, and then we get to verifying identities. And some of these, so last year's class I made, I did not make them memorize the power reducing identities. We just used them to derive um, the half angle identities. But they did have to memorize the half angle identities. I'm giving you guys half angle identities, but requiring you to memorize the power reducing identities. And that was determined um, after speaking with Mr. Omnoth and Ms. Chazinska that they think that you guys need to know power reducing for AP Calc. Um, okay, so looking at this identity, the left-hand side is obviously more complicated. Uh, we can use the sum identity for cosine. So cosine of A times cosine of B minus sine of A times sine of B. Um, and then the difference identity for cosine uh, would be cosine A times cosine B uh, plus sine A sine B. Well, sine A and sine B, or sine A times sine B will end up canceling. So guess what? We're just left with 2 times cosine A cosine B. Done. This is actually power reducing identity that you guys already have to memorize. So I, I didn't go over this in class, but you could prove it. You could always just use a double angle identity for cosine. We could use the one that's, um, how about one minus two cosine squared, or no, it's two, oops it up. 2 cosine squared minus 1 all over 2. So the 1's cancel. You have 2 cosine squared over 2. The 2's cancel, so then that's just cosine. But that is a power reducing identity. Okay. This one, left side's more complicated. We can use um, the sum identity for tangent, which, 
want to double check I have the plus and minus correct. So it will be plus. Okay. Oh, and minus. Okay, so it'll be tan x minus tan of pi over 1 plus tan x times tan of pi. Well, tangent of pi is just equal to 0. So this ends up being <clears throat> this ends up being 0 and <clears throat> this product ends up being 0. So we're just left with tangent of x. Easy peasy. Again, power reducing identity. Okay, for this one, I would probably work the left side just because 4x, um, I can break up the 4x. So I'm going to rewrite this as 4 times cosecant of 2x plus 2x. And cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So this is equal to 4 over sine of 2x plus 2x. And now I can use the sum identity for sine. Okay. Um, so we have 2 sine 2x times cosine of 2x. Well, guess what? That is the, that is not. Oh, we're not done. I need more room. Okay, so notice that in this identity, that we have cosine 2x in the denominator, so we're going to want to leave this alone. But we can use the double angle identity for sine, and also noticing that this 2 will cancel with a 2 up here. So now, now we'll have a 2 in the numerator. So 2 over 2 times sine times cosine times cosine of 2x. And then those twos will cancel. And one over sine remembers cosecant. One over cosine is secant. So this is cosecant x cosine x over cosine of 2x, which, bam, is the identity. Oh, why did I write cosine? I meant secant. That's the identity. Just written. Ugh. Okay. Maybe yeah, these three have left. Okay, okay so. <clears throat> left or right hand side, doesn't really matter, but left hand side, uh, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So I can use the reciprocal of the double angle identity for tangent. So 1 minus tan squared over 2 tan x. And 1 minus tan squared is equal, how do we want to do this? That is the double angle identity, right? Oops. Yeah. Just making sure. So let's see. 
this is equal to secant squared. Hmm. Or I wonder hmm. Okay, well, I'm kind of stuck. So, I'm going to pull this 1 half out front and I'm gonna change secant squared to be cosine squared over sine squared. But that's not what that's equal to. I'm sorry, you guys, I'm tired. This is equal to one over cosine squared and then over sine over cosine. Okay, um, so then that would be one half times one over cosine squared times cosine over sine. So, no, it's not working. I could change this to be one minus. sine squared over cosine squared. And then if I wanted to multiply by cosine squared over cosine squared. I just did this yesterday and I'm having a brain fart. So this will be cosine squared minus sine squared over two sine times cosine. Ah, okay. Well then this is going to be cosine squared over two sine times cosine minus sine squared over two sine cosine. These will, this will end up being uh, cosine over two sine of x minus sine over two cosine of x, which, just running out of room, if I factor one half out, cosine over sine is cotangent, and sine over cosine is tangent. I believe that's it. Sorry, that took me a while. You got stuck. Okay, so for this next one, um, it would be helpful to recognize that cosine squared minus sine squared is actually equal to cosine of 2x. It's a double angle identity. So since the angle in this case is not x, it's x over 2 on the left hand side, this will be cosine of 2 times the angle x over 2, which is just cosine of x. And 
and here we go. So secant squared of x over 2. So that's the same thing, remember, as secant of x over 2 squared, which secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So the half angle identity for cosine, but flipped, will be plus or minus the square root of 2 over 1 minus cosine x. No, 1 plus cosine x squared. Or is it minus? No, it's plus. Okay. Um, this is actually just going to be 2 over 1 plus cosine. And notice we have a 1 minus cosine in the numerator there. So if I multiply by 1 minus cosine over itself, I'll end up with 2 times 1 minus cosine, which is what we want, over 1 minus cosine squared. And 1 minus cosine squared by the Pythagorean identity is sine squared. So we're done.